Yo, what's up guys, Nate here, welcome back to the channel. So today I've got two synths that have been sent to me, Plugin Boutique very kindly sent me uh, copies of the new Cherry Audio CA2600, it's an ARP2600 clone, uh, as well as the DCO106. Uh, now you guys know that I'm a big fan of the Cherry Audio stuff, I use Voltage Modular quite a bit, I've done a few videos on that on the channel. So I was pretty excited to check these out. Uh, it's interesting to see them move away from their voltage modular platform and do some standalone instruments as well. Uh, we're going to be checking out the CA2600 in this video. I'll briefly look at the 106 at the end as well and just give you my thoughts on that. Um, so I got these plugins sent to me, however they don't have any sort of bearing on uh, what I think on these plugins as well. None of the content is monitored at all. Um, I do also have some affiliate links. Uh, if you guys want to buy these plugins, you can grab them through those links at no extra cost to you. It does help out the channel a little bit, but I do not uh, post affiliate links to stuff that I don't uh, recommend or use myself. They're currently both on sale uh, at intro price, uh, which is kind of ridiculous. They're $25 for each of these synths, um, which I think is a massive deal. Uh, they will go up to $39, I believe, uh, when they are at full price, but still, even at that price, I think they are both really good value for money. Um, anyways, let's dive in. Uh, guys, as always, if you enjoy the content on the channel, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and the notifications so that you guys know when I have new content online. Let's dive in. We're going to check this out. Right, so I previously did some uh, uh, video on the Vintage Voice bundle that you see here. Uh, this is for Voltage Modular. And what they've done is they've kind of expanded on this, uh, on these these instruments now, and created sort of um, more authentic clones uh, of the hardware. These were kind of loosely based on on those instruments, the DCO60 and the Synth Voice uh, for Voltage Modular. Uh, there's no upgrade path, but they've put in sufficient work um, to warrant just buying these new. I mean, they are uh, individual plugins. Uh, you don't need voltage modular to run these at all, but they are based on the same tech, especially the 2600, uh, which is really good news because voltage uh, has got some of the best, most intuitive patching as far as I've uh, as I've seen in any sort of software modular environment. Uh, it really is a pleasure to work with as far as the UI is concerned. Let's open up the 2600. Here we go. Uh, they've got a nice modern clean interface, which is rescalable. It scales nicely. Uh, so great job on that. Uh, you can easily uh, assign MIDI to any of the controls. Just right click, learn the MIDI. Um, you've got the same settings that you have with uh, voltage modular for the transparency of cables, etc. So you can easily just patch, or, patch around. Um, I've used the ARP2600 from Arturia, which I think sounds great. I don't have them installed. I don't use the Arturia stuff all that much. Um, but uh, the patching on this is way, way more intuitive than the uh, Arturia version for me personally. This doesn't have the sequencer that's on the Arturia one, but that's not really a big deal. Uh, I can do that with external arpeggiators or even run sequences from Voltage Modular into this as well. Let's we'll take a look at the settings here quickly. We've got some different skins for it as well. The gray edition of the 2600 as well as the blue Marvin. Um, but we'll just leave it on the orange and black for now. Um, let's take a look at the preset management up at the top. We can just play a few sounds from here. This is what it sounds like. I've just got some uh, external reverb and delays patched in currently. I'll just turn those off so you can just hear the dry uh, from the 2600. It does have a delay, uh, just a mono delay and a reverb. I was never a fan of the spring reverb that they had on the Vintage Voice. Um, they have it here as well. We'll just dial in some more of the reverb quickly. But they have also included a plate, which actually sounds half decent. Mm -hmm. 
not too bad. Uh, we'll just go through a few. Let's take a look at some of that bass patches. Let me just actually just open up a MIDI insert here quickly. I'll just put a Apache on this. Cool. Uh, it sounds pretty decent. Um, this is not going to be a comparison video. I don't have a uh, hardware version of this, obviously, and. Um, I'm not going to compare it to any of the software versions of this either. I uh, am not just not all that interested in comparisons anymore. I think if it sounds good, that's enough for me. I did look at a few of the uh, DCO 106 comparisons to the Roland stuff and uh, to hardware, etc. And there are some differences, but it was close enough for me that it didn't bother me at all. And, you know, when you're using these things in a mix, uh, that becomes less of a worry. For me, it's more, you know, is the synth fun to play with and does it sound good on its own, in its own right? And I definitely think this ticks all those boxes for me. Let's dive in. Um, we create some stuff quickly with this um, so one of the really cool things with the 2600 is it's semi semi modular but um, everything is really pre-patched or, or normaled uh, behind the panel normally so uh, you already have patch assignments for everything and these are all indicated by the little icons down at the bottom here so you can see what is hardwired to that input um, when you start patching, you essentially override those, uh, just like you would in a normal patch bay. Um, so let's play around with this a little bit. I've just kind of uh, started a new preset here. Let me just put my effects back on again. I'm not going to use the internal effects from this. We'll turn the reverb off. Here's our default patch. Uh, so we'll take a look just quickly at the sort of architecture of the synth. You've got all your CV stuff coming in here on the left-hand side. Uh, some other... This is actually one other really cool thing with this. Um, this is a VST3 version, and you can actually sidechain this. You don't actually have to put this on as an effect to get audio into it. You can sidechain uh, this to another channel. We can, say, bring in a drum beat and use that. Um, side chain as a CV, uh, we can plug that into the envelope follower and then convert that into CV so that we can track, you know, with a filter or something, we can follow the uh, inputs of the audio. We've got three voltage controlled oscillators here uh, that feed into a single multi mode filter 24 dB and 12 dB and band pass, high pass, low pass. That feeds into our uh, voltage controlled amplifier and then into this mixer at the end we've got two envelopes an LFO sample and hold source and then this voltage processing uh, unit down at the bottom uh, this is for kind of you know adding and uh, adding different CV signals together you've got uh, some sources like 10 volt that you can add to your CV etc etc um, there is also a way because of uh, the way that voltage modular works as well which this is based on um, there's some nice additions that you can actually sort of negate having to use this as well you don't need to uh, do additions uh, signal additions and things with this and I'll show you that in just a second um, let's uh, take a look at mixing some of these oscillators together we'll just take down oscillator two and three So we've got the uh, square wave from VCO1 normaled into this first slot that we have here. Uh, we can double this one up and actually make it a four oscillator uh, patch this. And you do that now by overriding stuff. So we have the ring mod patched in here uh, normally. Um, but what we can do is we can override that with the output of the sub from VCO1. And now we've just got VCO1 playing, but we can bring the subwave in as well. So we've essentially got two oscillators um, on our section there, and it's all just coming from VCO1, so we can add in another two as well. Uh, let's bring in our second square wave. We'll just leave that as a square for now. 
Let's take a listen to the pulse width modulation. Uh, this is hard coded to the LFO. LFO is down here. And they have added some nice little features that you don't find on the hardware as well. Like you can just sync this here with that. And this will automatically sync to your clock's rate. Or your DAW's clock. Cool. Uh, we can bring in a saw as well. Um, I'll show you how to set up the sync on this. We can sync the saw to our VCO2. We just run the saw output from this one into the sync of that. And now we can, let's say, we'll just use the, we'll use the LFO as well to just uh, mod modulate the pitch of this one so we can check out the sync. We'll just override the SNH here. We can get some frequency modulation going on or FM. Let's maybe run the sine wave from our uh, VCO1. We can run that into, uh, you see this one here has basically got the uh, square wave from VCO1 hard coded for frequency modulation. We'll use the sine instead. Take a listen to that one by itself. Maybe try to patch that two to our saw instead. Just to take the sink off. Um, so some interesting stuff you can do, sort of overriding these connections and patching them into different places. Let's add in some filtering now. We'll bring down our low pass filter halfway. Now what we can do is add in some controls. We'll take the mod output from the bottom here and we're just gonna plug that into our filter. We'll override the keyboard tracking. <laughs> Uh, we can also assign an envelope. You'll see this one is hard coded again here. Yeah. Now this is also assigned to our VCA as well. So if we want to get a bit of a pluck going on here, it's also dropping the volume of the VCA at the same time. To get around that, we can switch out the ADSR for the AR uh, envelope, the simplified one here. Yeah. And to do that, we'll just check out here in the VCA section. This is where it's getting its control from. We'll bring that down. So it's now deriving its uh, amplitude from the AR generator instead. Um, let's check out the S and H now. We're going to uh, modulate our filter with the sample and hold. Uh, we also have uh, frequency modulation on the filter hard patched in here as well. Let's check that out first. Um, again, I'm going to use the sine wave output to modulate the filter. And just check if you touch the output there, you'll get these multiples that open up just like in voltage modular, which is really nice um, because you can just kind of freely route these around wherever you want without having to run them through uh, malts or... Uh, the voltage processor and this is works works in reverse like i said you you can actually bypass this so you can mix signals together in the section here um, but you can also mix them just by multiplying the 
the inputs and outputs here. So this works in reverse, same way that we did that. If we wanted to add something to this uh, sine wave that we have here, we can actually just click this one and bring in a higher octave sine. So we've got two waveforms actually being added together for the frequency modulation now. It's not really sounding all that great, but it is doable. You can do that. There you can hear that frequency modulation on the filter working quite nicely. Uh, let's bring in some S and H on our filter as well. So we'll look down at the sample and hold. Again, this is really convenient. You can just sync this automatically, so you don't have to patch a clock source into this. You can if you want, but uh, you don't have to. You can just sync this and set the timing down here. Yeah? Turn down the frequency modulation. And we could override the frequency modulation, but like I said, you can add this to the mod wheel if you want uh, by using the malts again like this. You can just bring this down and plug the SNH out into the same uh, input that we have the mod assignment into. So. <laughs> So we have essentially those two being added together uh, into this one um, input here. We don't need to do that for now though, so let's just keep them separate. The filter is really nice as well, you can get some self oscillation going with this. Um, let's take a quick look at this as well, just so we kind of cover all the bases. Uh, we can run our S and H into the slew as well. Uh, currently the envelope follows in there. We can plug our S and H into this. Take a listen to what we get now when we run this into the filter again. So we've got some random SNH, but it's being smoothed out by the slew limiter or the lag generator. Now another little thing I wanted to show you guys, uh, this creates some nice effects as well. We're going to stick this into legato mode. And the 2600 has a glide setting for each oscillator, so you can get some interesting effects with this. We'll stick a sort of lower amount for the subs, we'll go a little bit higher for the mid one. Let's do a really high one for the third one. And then what we can actually do with this being a really high glide rate, let's just resync this to uh, the second, or actually we'll sync this to the first one. So the sync will only kick in when, or you're only going to really hear it when it's uh, in that glide process. And because this one is now set to a long one, this one will go for a little while, while the others have already reached their pitches. Let's take a listen. Really interesting effect that you get with that. So yeah, um, that's the basics. Uh, <laughs> extremely cool plugin. This uh, I've been having a lot of fun playing around with this. Um, uh, if you're looking for a sort of semi-modular uh, setup like this, where you can do some cool modular stuff, but without having to get sucked into buying a whole bunch of modules and things like that, I think this is an excellent, excellent buy. Uh, especially, like I said, for the intro price of twenty-five dollars. Uh, it really is a bit of a no-brainer, this. Um, it sounds really good to my ears. Um, I was super impressed with this one. Just before we finish, I'll just quickly take a look at the DCO 106 as well. I kind of didn't cover this when it came out. I wasn't super excited about a, another Juno clone. 
But um, yeah, it's it's a Juno. It works like a Juno. Uh, sounds pretty much like a Juno. And again, it's it's very fluid and easy to use, uh, and fairly lightweight in the CPU. So I actually think you know generally for uh, this Juno esque kind of stuff, I turn to Diva quite often, and more recently Super Eight from Native Instruments. Um, but I think if you're looking for a simple uh, Juno clone, this is a really good buy uh, and fairly light on the CPU uh, as opposed to something like Diva, for example. I think this one actually has all the original Juno presets as well. These ones are labeled as A48, or A51, etc. These are actually the original presets. Um, and then all the newer ones as well. Cool. I'm going to cut it there. Uh, I do think you should go, should go d uh, demo these for yourself. Um, check them out. And uh, yeah, I think the DCO is not going to be on sale for much longer. It's been out for a little bit now. Um, but the CA2600 that's just come out now as of recording of this video. Uh, so go and check that out. I'll leave the links in the uh, comments down below and in the description. Uh, you guys can go and grab these for yourself. Uh, highly recommend them. Cool. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, lastly, again, just smash that like button, uh, subscribe, and notifications. We'll catch you guys again soon right here at Marula Music. Cheers and take care.